My insurance company is denying the drug test. This is what this person said to you? Yeah. The insurance company is denying yeah. the testing for drugs? Yep. Yep. Uh, Let that sink in, folks. <laughs> Your car has disappeared for X amount of time. Right. Whether it days, weeks, month, whatever that can, that can be. Yeah. We do not, we know that we do not know what was done in that vehicle, with that vehicle, what other crimes might have been uh, done while using that vehicle. Because uh, generally speaking, somebody will steal a car and they'll also steal plates from a different car. So now we have stolen plates on a stolen car. If they go commit another crime, which happens, it happens all the time, every day. Yes, the business may have, or the home, or ring, or whatever. You may have evidence of the vehicle and the and the license plate that they're not going to match. They're not going to match. So this could be involved in a crime. Could be involved in a chase. Could be involved in anything. The fact of the matter is, we don't know. We don't know what was done inside the vehicle. You know, whether it be drugs or living in it or. You know, we just don't even know. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of The Airing of Grievances. My name is Eric Raymer. This is Robert Grieve. And we are so thankful that you are with us today. We've got a really important message for you today. But before we get to that, if you're one of our old-time family, you like to hang out with us. You give us a little comments in the section. And we, we thank you for the comments. Wow. Last couple it's of lots videos, of fun. we've had a lot of comments. Yeah, it's been lots of fun. And uh, if you're watching this for the very first time, and you see something that you like, we say, first, thank you. Give us the thumbs up. All of y'all. can. All of y'all? All of y'all. All y'all, we're from Colorado. We don't we don't do that very well. Give us the thumbs up. That tells YouTube that this is the uh, content that you appreciate watching, and it helps them share it out with others. And over the last two videos that we've been doing, uh, that's working. Thank so, you. Thank you so very much. We appreciate that. Uh, secondarily, if uh, you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? It's free, and uh, we've got lots of great content for you and again th these videos are connected and and designed for the consumer we have lots of industry friends as well who are watching and engaging with us and incredibly supportive very supportive thank you uh but these messages really are intended for the consumer and like i said we've got a great one i say great it's just super important and so stick around, watch it to the end, because uh, we always have nuggets of wisdom that happen at the end of these videos as well. And Rob, I just want to say thanks again for being here. Happy Saturday to you. Happy Saturday to you, my dear friends. Yeah. Thank you so much for tuning in and, and supporting us. We appreciate it. You betcha. All right, so Rob, we're going to frame this up here. Uh, and, and I think it's important to uh, say that the story that we're about to present is someone else's story who saw one of our videos and reached out to you, mm -hmm. right? Yep. When we say that we're willing to help, we really are. Yeah, I'm deep in it too. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> All right, so set the stage for us. Where are we going with this today? Uh, okay, well, we're gonna talk about uh, theft and recoveries, which is a very big subject here in Colorado as we're number one in the nation for stolen and recovered uh, vehicles. Certainly stolen cars. Uh, Definitely uh, stolen uh, cars. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure about the recovered part. But well, <laughs> we, we posted a blog uh, almost two years ago now uh, that talked about um, if your car is stolen and recovered, don't get in immediately. And the that's interesting enough but to find out why we say don't get in uh, we also posted another video I'll put a link to it right here uh, and also down in the description box that talks about why we say don't get in a stolen or recovered vehicle until you do one thing and that one thing is drug test a vehicle 
before we wrote that blog two years ago, I didn't know that drug testing a vehicle was even a thing. Mm -hmm. But we've discovered that it is not only a thing, but it is a big and very important thing. Police officers, when they recover stolen vehicles, are, are claiming illness and in some case uh, like like career ending illnesses. Yeah, there's no uh, lack of documentation out there on the internet of, of the, the severity yeah. of, of, of these drugs, the drug residues, uh, possible paraphernalia, needles yeah. left behind or maybe in between the seats and you go to reach and get something and now you're jabbed with a needle that God only knows. Right. Uh, you know, our position uh, for years has been if, it, if it's a stolen or recovery and it lands up here, nobody enters the vehicle until the drug test is completed and verified that it is clean. If you were to take a look, and I'll put a link in the description box below, you would be shocked at the percentage of vehicles that are affected and in some cases so affected to the point of a total loss. Most of them. Well, Most of them that arrive here land up being deemed a total loss. Yeah. One of the articles that I'll, uh, I'll put down below says 90% of stolen and recovered vehicles test positive for methamphetamine, yep. which can be dangerous, toxic, and sometimes even lethal, depending on the the exposure. Yeah. So it, it's it's not a uh, it's a you understood here that this is how the car is going to get handled. Yeah. Uh, and and it's important for uh, my employees. I don't want them to get hurt uh, or suffer any kind of an illness or yeah. anything like that. It's it's just a, I and I don't recommend to anybody that gets their car stolen and then gets a phone call from the police we've recovered your vehicle do not get in the vehicle don't get it do not get in the vehicle so let's talk about drug testing the car for just a minute who who should pay that in in, in your experience who does pay that the insurance company the, the insurance company should pay that yeah that's part of the process of risk, you know making sure that it's safe to drive right Yes, because it's not only safe to drive for you, it's safe to drive for your passengers if you have children in the vehicle. Here's the thing that we know. Okay. Your car has disappeared for X amount of time. Right. Whether it days, weeks, month, whatever that can, that can be. Yeah. We do not, we know that we do not know what was done in that vehicle, with that vehicle, what other crimes might have been uh, done while using that vehicle because uh, generally speaking somebody will steal a car and they'll also steal plates from a different car so now we have stolen plates on a stolen car if they go commit another crime which happens it happens all the time every day yes the business may have or the home or ring or whatever you may have evidence of the vehicle and the and the license plate that they're not going to match. They're not going to match. So this could be involved in a crime, could be involved in a chase, could be involved in anything. The fact of the matter is we don't know. We don't know what was done inside the vehicle, you know, whether it be drugs or living in it or, you know, we just don't even know. Right. So if you don't know, I, I think it's prudent to give you some peace of mind that the thing is drug tested so we know was there stuff present is there stuff present it's not something you can look inside the car and say oh yeah this is good to go you cannot see it most cases you can't smell it it's just residue and even the police you know are, are hesitant to pat people down yeah just because if, you, if you're hitting the pockets and fentanyl, you know, a powdered substance or something comes out and gets on you, it's, it could, could make you very, very sick. Yeah, we've, we've got lots of resources. And again, you can look at the description box. I'll also be updating our uh, article from two years ago to uh, reflect even more information that has come in the last couple of years. 
uh, about these uh, chemical residues. And like you said, uh, you know, you can't see it in many cases. Uh, you may not know it's there, but if you accidentally touch it and it absorbs into your skin, you've got a very, very real it, issue. It, it could be. Yeah. It could be. Yeah. Um, so it, it's, it is a thing. Yes. I'm not making this up. <laughs> no. Uh, there's tons of articles about it. I've been cited in a couple of articles about it. Yep. Uh, and it's enough of a problem that Colorado has made regulations as to who can do the drug testing, who can remediate if it's not above certain levels, uh, that it has to be re-drug tested after it's been remediated yep. to make sure that it is below a- any particular levels. And they have standards. They have levels yep. that, they, uh, that they also have standards it's, to. It's a long read. Yeah. To, to, to read these regulations and we have a, a so you have to be registered with Colorado in order to be somebody to do the testing okay. and there's you know chain of custody regulations everything yeah like they swab goes in a thing they have to draw a little picture of where that swab came yeah. from this label is, it this is and evidence then, in a court of law yeah this is this is this is big stuff yeah. uh, and the fact of the matter is most cars that that come through my building yes. that are uh, stolen recoveries, uh, I've only seen one that was at a level that it could be cleaned. Okay. All the um, others? Were deemed a total loss. Yeah. They're deemed a total loss because... I don't know why you would even take the risk. Sure. I don't even know why you would take the risk. And apparently many of the insurance companies agree with you. Yeah, 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 because it's their liability too. Right. Uh, whether they believe that's the case or not. Which brings I mean, us... they need to be prudent. Y- yes. And, that... and we know that this is a problem. Everybody knows this is a problem. Yeah. That brings us to today's story. Yeah. So... I can't even call them my guest because we don't have their car. Right. They called uh, because they saw our video that we did last year, I think it was, yep. uh, and read a bunch of articles, and they said, I, I, I need help. I'm like, perfect. How can I help you? Sure. My insurance company is denying the drug test. This is what this person said to you? Yeah. The insurance company is denying yeah. the testing for drugs. Yep. Yep. Uh, Let that sink in, folks. It, I'm like, yeah, this should be a no-brainer. Right. No, we're, we're three levels up as far as supervisors and so on and so forth, and they, they all uh, are, are keeping the same opinion that uh, they're not going to cover it. It strikes me as beyond absurd, mm-hmm. and uh, because this is not our guest, and because this is an ongoing discussion, uh, we're not going to name the parties involved. Uh, but I can tell you this: when it, for me it boils down to this, and I wrote this down so that I would wouldn't forget. When it comes to safety, what role does or should the insurance company play in protecting their insureds? And your answer was mind-blowing, but accurate. Every role within their power. Yeah. Yeah. Right? They they need to keep you safe. That's that's the point of of having insurance. Right. Uh, And, you know, so my first thing, you know, I, I asked is, did they put it in writing? And the person said, no, um, they, they told me uh, on the phone. And I said, well, you need to get it in writing. You need to get what their position is in writing. This is good advice for anyone discussing with any kind of contractual Absolutely. Agreement. Absolutely. So uh, blankety blank insurance does not authorize drug testing. We do authorize an ozone treatment and white glove cleaning. Mm. (sighs) 
Tell me what you know about ozone. Yeah. D- don't fall for these things. Don't fall for these 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 nice words and scientific blah blah blah. Ozone cleaning is nothing other than basically changing the air in the car and uh, uh, sanitizing ish. Right. It, it's for odors. It's used for odors. Yes. Mildew. And, yes. It's and bacteria other that things. causes odors. It's We're, about removing odors, not right chemicals. Right. <laughs> Which drugs are chemicals? Yeah. And this white glove cleaning is it's is a, a detail. It's a detail. It's a detail. <laughs> right. And so, if you go to the Colorado regulations, you have to hire a specific company, not a specific company, you have to hire a company that is certified and registered within Colorado to perform this remediation. Right. Not a detail. Yeah, these guys wear hazmat suits on a daily. Yeah, it's it's not a detail. (laughs) Right. Um, And... The ozone, it means nothing. It, it sounds cool, and it sounds like, oh, well, that's probably what I'm going to need. Yeah. It does nothing to counteract drugs. Toxic chemicals. It, it does not. All right. And and so, you know, they authorize this, this ozone treatment and white glove cleaning. That goes against Colorado regulations. Colorado regulations say you have to clean it a certain way with certain types of products you have to dispose of it in a certain way but first you, know, you if, have if, to if, discover if, if there's something necessary to be cleaned, remediated yeah. Right? yeah 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 and so you know they're going to authorize the ozone treatment and the white glove uh cleaning why it reminds me of the word assume yeah because they won't drug test it first because how would you know if it's effective or not unless you've got a baseline? The baseline should say there's presence or there's no presence. If there is a presence, it's above or below this, uh, you know, level. This insurance company, which, by the way, uh, is probably a profitable business is saying that they are, they're standing upon, and this is written in the documentation of uh, emails back and forth, standing on the fact that they're not going to uh, do the drug testing because those people who do drug testing... Oh, can I just read it? Please, yeah. This company does not authorize the full drug testing due to the excessive cost of these that these companies charge. That these companies charge. Excessive costs. I, I, I can't make it up. I cannot believe that we would even put this sort of thing in writing. It doesn't matter how much it costs. You're covered or you're not covered. Right. So my second piece of advice to this person was ask them, let me see, please provide me the language in my insurance policy that states that a drug test on recovered stolen vehicles are denied and that only ozone treatment and white glove cleaning will be authorized. Show me in my policy, my contract the with contract. you. The contract. Where, what, what, what your basis of denying this is. Well, we haven't gotten that yet either. Well, we've got a bunch of run, run around. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and it's, it, the one thing they did say is, it's our policy. It's our policy. Not to. But we, if you go back to that other video that we did, uh, talking about the hidden hidden uh, uh, limits, limits. Yep. Uh, this may be one of those hidden limits. Except for, w- what good is it if you don't know? You read the, you have your policy. You need to know what it says about right. these things. Right. And if it doesn't say anything about it, in my world, it's covered. Unless it says it's excluded or puts a limit on it. Right. Let's put a pin in that for just a moment, and let's talk again about our experience with stolen and recovered vehicles. I asked you just before we turned on the camera here, how many of those have you experienced through the doors of Nylon's Collision Center here? Uh, I I don't know how many exactly, but but you said many. Many, yeah. Right? Many, many. That's, That's more than many. Yeah. Right? 
in that experience, has it been your experience with it, with the one exception, mm-hmm. that the insurers involved, and many of them are on different sides of the lists that we create, both great insurers and not so great insurers, mm-hmm. but they've all paid with the exception of the one. Well, even the one that was low enough that it could be cleaned? Yeah. Hello? We know what it was. <laughs> you, can't, you can't know what it was unless you do this testing and you do it the way the laws and the regulations state. This is one of the things I love most about you, Rob, is that you have always been able to take a conversation, a situation, a circumstance, and break it down into logical steps. It's how you think, and I wish I had half of the It's just common process. sense. It's just common sense. And what do we know about common sense? That it is... A little uncommon these days. Far too often uncommon. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the, the, the purpose of us even in talking about this today, one is to make sure you understand how important it is to your health and safety and the health and safety of anybody else that may get into that car or vehicle that you know. We have another car out here that we uh, uh, had drug tested and uh, it cleared for fentanyl. Yep. No trace of fentanyl. Good. But it's over the limit on meth. By about eight times. Yeah. So, you know, we're, we're going through the process on that. And, uh, but it can be one, the other, both, or none. You don't know until you know. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's a big enough issue that you need to be aware of it and you need to not listen to anybody but your gut. Right. All right. I know that our car was stolen. That's a horrific thing to happen. It, it, it's a violation when when somebody takes something of yours of course. or or enters your house and not supposed to be there or whatever the case may sure. be burglaries whatever um you get the car back the police call you okay cars at the pound and you know it's yours go get it do not get in the car i don't know how else to say it until you know if it's clean, if anything was used in it or not, you don't know what was done. We don't know if the, you know, take take the drug thing out of it for a second yeah. and just say maybe they were just joyriding with the thing and, oh, by the way, they hit a couple of curves. You can't look at the car and necessarily know if your alignment's still there or not. Sure. You just have no idea what that vehicle was being used for when it was not in your care, custody, and control. So... You need to know. Yes. And and from I, our perspective, the insurance company needs to yeah. give you that peace of mind. Yeah. It's, and, and it's again, their ethical and moral responsibility. It's the first time I've ever come across this, and it totally goes against the regulations. But it doesn't go against the regulations if there's no drugs present. But you can't assume that there's no drugs present with the amount of vehicles there's a ton of drug use in these vehicles. This article says 90%. Yeah. It, we're, we're not making this up. It's a safety concern. Um, I care about the motoring public. I care about you. I care about the shops. If you're a shop, don't allow your employees in that vehicle. Have it pulled off the tow truck and leave it and, and, and call up the uh, certified industrial hygienist that's certified to do these tests. Yes. Have the tests done so you know your employees are safe and we can let the guest know yeah. your car is okay. Yep. Or your car is not okay and you're never going to have to be in this car again. It's really, really important, folks. If you have questions about this, whether you're on the industry side and uh, the, the stuff that you need to know about it or you're a consumer and God forbid you know somebody or you yourself have uh, been the victim of such a crime, uh, listen, here's our phone number, all right? And you can reach out to us anytime. 
And if we're not able to answer your questions directly, we are certainly able to point you in the direction of those who can. Yeah, we have lots of resources. We, and, and we do. We're, you know, this thing is, is far from over. This, this is not going to turn out well for, for this insurance company. Uh, we have lots of, re I've made phone calls to several different types of people that do types of things. And uh, they are sitting in the background ready for when I say, okay, enough's enough. And uh, we're going to get this this person taken care of. Yeah, uh, it's just too important not to. We agree. So, Rob, thank you for your time. Thank yep. you for your expertise, and for your advice. And again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate. Reach out to us at the phone number. You can go check out the blog article that is uh, going to be updated. It'll be it'll be updated the week after this airs. But check it out so that you can see uh, where we're going and what we're doing with it. And we appreciate you so much for taking the time to uh, to watch all the way to the end. And, uh, hey. Happy Saturday. According to <laughs> the calendar, tomorrow, as of the viewing of this video, is Easter. And so we wish you happy Easter. Happy Easter. God bless you, and uh, we'll see you next week. Hope you have an amazing week.